All right, everybody, welcome into Pay Dirt Sports. Uh, it is Nick here, solo in the studio, but not, or solo from the Pay Dirt team, not solo in the studio here, coming back with another fan profile. It's been a few weeks since we've done one of these, but I've got two uh, very good guys with me here, brothers for the first time on this show. Uh, we've got some family, some family chemistry here today. I'm excited uh, to have Vincent and Wes Steenberg on the show. Guys, how you doing? Doing great, Trucial. How's it going? Man, I'm fired up to be here. Excited to, to talk to you guys. So um, based or Vince is down or up in uh, Virginia and then Wes is down in Charlotte, but they uh, their biggest fanhood comes from their family and that is the Buffalo Bills. So uh, why don't you guys kind of uh, each introduce yourself, talk a little bit about why uh, the family loves the Bills so much, and then uh, we'll kind of take a deeper dive after that. Yeah, this is uh this is Vincent. Um, I uh, I grew up in Richmond, um, and but our father grew up in Buffalo, New York. Um, you know your classic Western New Yorker went to Syracuse. Huge Bills fan. Um, I guess he's not a huge hockey fan. I guess he'd be a Sabres fan, but um, hockey. Really, uh, and I I grew up oddly enough, and West can attest to this. I I grew up. First game I watched was the Super Bowl with Tom Brady in it. Became a Patriots fan for a year. I don't know if you know that's crucial, but um, I was a Patriots fan for a year or two. And then the family really kind of wrangled me in and said, you know, um, you're now. a Bills fan. Um, yeah, exactly. You're a Bills fan. So, um, yeah, uh, I think it took me really to, to become a Bills, a Bills backer. Um, uh, you know, the Ryan Fitzpatrick years were probably when I, oh, yeah. I really um, took it in. Um, but I was always playing for the Bills and, and Patriots at the same time, even. But the but once I realized they were rivals, you know, I was only like nine, nine, ten years old when all this was going on. Um, but ever since then, been a, been a huge, huge Bills fan. I've I've been through some dark, dark ages, even. Um, uh, but yeah, always been a big Bills fan. We finally caught a game, um, not in Buffalo. We still haven't been able to get there. Um, but caught a, caught a game with you in Nashville, Trucial. Yeah. Um, that was my first Bills game. That was as well the time. Yeah, and uh, you guys got that dub too. That was uh, that was a rough game for the Titans. It's just a crappy game overall. Uh, but it was ugly. Yeah, it was ugly for both sides. <laughs> Defensive matchup. You remember that guy who had Cat Daddy painted on the the back? Of, uh, he was like painted up, and it was uh, he didn't he was have a Bills neck fan. really. No, he was just he have a massive neck. guy, <laughs> massive guy, and he just had Cat Daddy number sixty nine painted on the back. <laughs> That's Bill's mafia, and like a, a yeah, and yeah, and he looks he looks like he was out in the sun, and he he hadn't seen sun in years, and he just he just bat, like in the Nashville just yeah, burning up. The Nashville game sounded like it was a it was a blast. I feel like I heard about that for like two years after it happened. Of how much oh, yeah. And we were we were sitting kind of in the Bills section for like the fourth yeah. quarter. We had moved around, and I, I screwed up because I followed Vincent over to the Bills section. So they were letting us have it. Bills Mafia was letting us have it, or letting me have it after the game. But it was it was fun either way. Yeah, there was a lot of Bills fans there. I don't know. We kind of I'm not not gonna lie. We took it over a little. I'm sure your pay are not gonna like oh, yeah. this. But oh no, but I mean they, the Bills Bills Mafia travels well. I mean the Titans have played the Bills a lot in recent years. Um, and we're, we're familiar with you guys, so we, we know how you travel. Who, who were uh, Titans fans, like Tennessee fans, before the Titans moved there? Like when, before the Oilers moved to Tennessee, who were they fans of? Uh, I'm not even really too sure because they moved here, what, 98, right as yeah. uh, I was born. Um, yeah, so I would think. Bengals or. Uh, yeah, Bengals fans probably. Bengals or Falcons. Falcons? Yeah, Falcons. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the Southeast thing with Atlanta. Yeah, it'd be one of the two. I don't know if well, maybe... one of the things about the Bills fans, one of the things about the Bills fans is that, um, and and you can almost go to like any city um, in the U.S. and you'll find like a Bills bar specifically because so many of the Bills, like but people from Buffalo have moved from Buffalo to other towns. Um, you know, and obviously there's a huge influx of people in Nashville. <laughs> It sucks in Buffalo. That's why they move, unfortunately. <laughs> why do you think dad moved? Dad dad got out of Buffalo. He's like, no, nah. as soon as he hit, what, 24? He's like, no, nah, I'm out. I'm going south. Going south. He's one of, the, one of the people that moved to a new city. We established that. Yeah. 
Well, Wes, why don't you uh, give us a quick intro here? Give a little background. We got Vinny uh, up next. We got his brother Wes here, older brother. Yeah, living in living in Charlotte. Didn't adopt any of the teams of Charlotte except for the Hornets. Okay, I'll, I'll wrap the Hornets. The Hornets are doing okay. They're right at five hundred. Um, right future too. Now, yeah, they're they're close. The other Ball brother has done very well. Um, and then we got Charlotte FC here now. I'll probably wrap Charlotte FC. They there you just go. start. Their uh, establishment. I think their first game against DC United last week. Um, but it's good. They're playing the Panther Stadium. It's fun. But no, I look at Charlotte. Um, like Vincent said, the Bills franchise has been a struggling story passed on, unfortunately, until now, generation to generation. Um, but we're in a good spot right now. Bills, I was talking to my buddy Kyle about it. And the fact that you can literally just replace players and you just all you need to do that for like five years and you have a shot at the Super Bowl every single year and they're in a good spot. And it's the first time since basically I was born like 30 years ago. And so to see that happen is really it's a good thing to be a part of. Yeah, no, the Bills uh, got a bright future for sure. Why don't we kind of speaking of back when you were growing up, I, I do want to take it back a little bit here and touch on a little Bill's history. So, uh -huh. Wes, since you got the seniority here, why don't you kick us off? Why don't you talk about uh, – we'll start off with favorite players first. We'll run it by either of y'all, and then we'll go favorite moment uh, after that. So, we'll, we'll do a little roundtable <laughs> discussion here. Kick us off with your favorite player growing up. Uh, there's a uh, favorite Bills player. I want to say Fred Jackson. Yeah. I want to say Fred Jackson just because, like, him being there – for like that, like seven years where we just sucked. And he was great. He's just, I don't know. He's a Bills player. I love Fred Jackson. Um, and then Stephon Gilmore probably because he's a cock just a little bit. Him him and um, was it Sammy Watkins were on the team at the same time. Uh, but no, it's, uh, what was the other second question? Oh, your favorite moment. Like kind of growing up. Yeah, yeah. Either uh, from late 90s, 2000s. What do you? I know it's maybe kind of a downtime in the Bills. Uh, yeah, Bills no, this is not weird. It's uh, the the Jaguars went when we went to the. It was it was McDermott's first year four years ago. That was awesome. When we went to the playoffs. We were like eight and eight, maybe nine and seven. When we went to the playoffs and beat the Jags in a playoff winning. I we like, lost the Jags. I yeah. thought we lost to the Jags. Did we lose? The maybe Jags? I covered it wrong. Or it was the Ravens. It was the Jags. Ravens. They had, they had the black uniform. Oh, Ravens. Ravens. It was yeah. we we um we went to the playoffs because of the Ra the Cincinnati beating the Ravens. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. That, it was what four years ago. Yeah, that was that was a cool win. It was just just going to the play. I was like, shit, man. so long. This is awesome to go to the playoffs yeah. now. Um, yeah, yeah. Fred Jackson and that. The second would be being the absolute breaks off the Patriots like two months ago. That was one of the most fun games I have ever experienced just watching. It was just touchdown after touchdown after touchdown after touchdown on your freaking rival. It was, that game was so much fun. Yeah. That game was fun. That's going to be pretty fun, I guess, kind of growing up. I mean, the Patriots have been beating on the Bills <laughs> for a while now. Kind of nice to get a little revenge finally. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. It was It was all compacted into that one game. It was just absolute bludgeoning them. It was fun, especially <laughs> after we lost in the snow. Um, early in the season, mid-season, if there, we just, as you said, you said, Vincent, it was like figuring out we can throw the ball in the fourth quarter because we have Josh Allen. Like, why not throw against the wind? Because we can. Uh, they figured out way too late. But anyways, yeah, so those are two. What you got, Vincent? Yeah, Vinny, why don't you uh, kick us off next? <laughs> favorite player and favorite moment? Yeah, I think Wes kind of covered it with Fred Jackson. I think everyone from Buffalo would say the exact same thing. You know, you got – I think there's like a little ring of honor for like the, the dark years, essentially. Um, you know, you have Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fred Jackson, um, Lee Evans, um, uh, Stevie Johnson. You know, those are the people that really, Stevie was a beast, but he really led us through like, you know, the dark ages of being, being a Bills fan for like the 2000s. Um, but I'm going to do something a little more recent. I'm going to go a, a more recent player. Um, uh, Trey White's been ever since he was drafted, he's been just like an A plus player for us. Yeah, um, and he's been such a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, and he's coming. You know, he's coming from LSU, and he's like 
deep south, but then he's like coming up to this cold city in Buffalo. Complete opposite. Same. Yeah, yeah opposite type of city. Vi- I mean, both cities like to have fun, but yeah, but um, it's different. Baton Rouge is definitely different than uh, Buffalo for sure. Right, and he's just and he just um, you know similar to a lot of the way I, I feel like Buffalo as a as a place you kind of have to just. Either you got to roll with it or, or, or you got to get out, you know. Um, and, and, you know, you saw with – and to get more historical, like Jim Kelly, like, didn't want to play for Buffalo. And then yeah. um, he just rolled with it, you know. And eventually, obviously – he Got still to four to Super Bowls. Day, you know. Yeah. 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 We, we can <laughs> – You can say you got to. We go really want to. <laughs> yeah. So what, um, we could dig it a little bit deeper after this. I might have to start probing the Jim Kelly questions. Yeah. Okay. Well – Let's get to my favorite moment. Yeah, first, yeah. Let's not get ahead. The four, the four falls. Um, but favorite moments probably, um, and this is and this this is going to sound um, mushy, but uh, you know, with our family, our 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 football fandom is very family based. Um, you know, we have six, we have four other siblings. You know, we have three sisters and another brother, um, and we're all big Bills fans, all six of us, um, and. You know, I think it was 2018 Thanksgiving, um, and we we're all sitting outside by a fire or a house watching the Bills just dominate the Cowboys on, like, national television. It was the first time in, like, a long time where I think people were like, ah, the Bills are, like, you know, they're not yeah, bad. They, like, yeah, they're pretty good. We're even doing that. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, we had those, like, pushing years of, like, being, like, 8-8 eight and eight with, with, like, LaShawn McCoy and Tyrod Taylor. Um, but I think, you know, that was when you realized Josh Allen could put us over that next edge um, to be, to be like a great team, you know, um, which we have been for the, for the last couple of years, you know? Um, so yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably my favorite moment. That's a good um, one. I'm trying to think if there's another one that's you, like, obviously you, the Patriots. Uh, thing. The, the Thanksgiving turkey leg after that, watching them eat that. <laughs> the blast. Cause we didn't play on Thanksgiving day. Mm-hmm. Beat the Cowboys. On Thanksgiving Day, just just beat the shit out of them. Like we beat them. Well, we we won maybe by two touchdowns, but we really owned that game. That was a fun one. I remember that. the turkey leg at the end because Trey it was Trey White and Josh Allen that had the turkey leg at the just end. Just munching on the victory leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was awesome. That was a good win. Oh, I good. love it. Yeah, and it's always when you're around other Bills fans and it's your family too and you guys are getting fired up even more as you're scoring more and more and just beating the crap out of the Cowboys. That's going to be a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, America's team. I think, I I mean, I, I don't want to sound like, I feel like there's probably, you know, I don't think there's a lot of Bills haters yet. I think there could be. No, yeah, there will be. There will be. Um, <laughs> yeah, there probably will be, but I, I, I really think that, like, in that game, most of America was probably rooting for us to beat the Cowboys too, which is just kind of an added little fun. Um, oh yeah, you know, other than Cowboys fans, yeah. but I don't know how many Cowboys listeners we got here. But <laughs> you earn hate. Colin says you earn haters, which is a very, very good phrase for that. You earn haters. People are going to hate us soon. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. It's not really a bad thing to have haters, though. I mean, that no, means you're not. you're winning. <laughs> to you got to be winning. Nobody hates the Jags. Like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We kind of hated the Jags, Jags this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, what are their long yeah. wins? Yeah, for you one know, game, we, I hated the Jags this year. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Yeah. I mean, hey, yeah. y'all still went toe-to-toe with Mahomes in the AFC playoffs. I mean, it, it yeah. was a – went to – got more wins than um, Tennessee, so. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, y'all have the AFC regular season champs, though. I, I really like um, kind of, you know, I guess both of our teams are in such a comfortable place. Um, I mean, if we didn't change the roster at all from today, we'd both still be competing, I think, um, yeah. in the playoffs, which says a lot. <laughs> yeah. All season's here. All season's here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we talk a little bit uh, older bills before we get into kind of the college talk up next, Vinny, that you were talking about. Obviously, it was 93, 92, 91, and 90. Bills went to four straight, lost all four. Uh, but some very famous players on that team, some big names. Why don't you kind of just uh, run us through some of that, Vinny? Yeah, so the one thing that does about being in Richmond is um, one of those years we did lose to 
what at the time was the Redskins, who are now the um, Wait, Commanders. You got, you got to do like Prince. You went, you went Redskins, Washington football team, the Commanders. You yes. Walked yes. Uh, <laughs> either way, they're they're <laughs> <laughs> they're um they did beat us one of those years. So having that over, you know, most of the fans I deal with on a daily basis are the Commanders fans, um, and. So hearing hearing them hearing having that on my head is, is is already enough. But you know, then we have the three three other ones that we lost. Um, I think I think I, I take solace in the fact that um, that's. I mean, you could also take solace in the fact that they are AFC championships. I mean, yeah, that's your first I mean, thought. But and and they were probably like the best team of of you know they were some of the best teams of the decade, some of the best players. Um, but I think really in a way it made the like Buffalo community kind of stronger and all those, most of those players on those teams like live in Buffalo still to this day. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it really, you know, I think, I think it also is kind of like stirring the pot for whenever if if somehow the bills ever won the Super Bowl, <laughs> it would be like so absurd for the town that, that I don't know what it but, like if words could describe it. Um, like, like if, if, for example, if like Josh Allen led to the Super Bowl, not this is completely hypothetical. Not but gonna work. He, not gonna he could he could have the worst career trajectory afterwards, and he'd still be the hero of Buffalo forever. Um, you know, it's like one of those scenarios where I, I'm trying to think of a quarterback that's kind of done that. Um, it's Russell time, baby. Read to memory. If Russell won yeah. one Super Bowl, if, what, if Russell Wilson won one Super Bowl, would he be the senior of Seattle that he is? Would that be similar? Yeah, because he. Close. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, Russ has had some pretty good years, Better? but. Yeah, now, I, is Cam is Cam a legend? Cam Newton, Cam Newton didn't win a Super Bowl, but. He, yeah, he got to one. He it's kind of like the he Cam hit. Newton, Matt Ryan get to one and never do it again. Yeah, yeah. Matt Ryan's a good. Comparison. Yeah, it's like Nick Full. It's like Nick Full. Like Nick Full. Yeah, if he had a career like Nick Full. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like where he just dropped off, like he, had a career he would still be considered like he would never be forgotten. You know, it, it, he's just that's like the scenario that every team is in from here on out. Where like if the Bills win the Super Bowl, they're heroes. Like they are bona fide heroes for us. Um, I mean, those guys, the guys who won to the four Super Bowls are those are our current yeah. heroes: Thurman Thomas, um, Andre Reid, Thurman Thomas, yeah, Bruce. yeah, Jim Kelly, Bruce Smith, Bruce. I mean, <laughs> yeah. A lot of, lot of like Hall of Famers on those teams too. Like just not, not even big names, NFL legends. So, yeah, they were, they were yeah, super good. Right? And then they were, that team was fantastic. And uh, I well, remember they, uh, they're the original Peyton Manning team. They're the original like run and gun, audible at the line team. Yeah. yeah let the QB kind of just run the offense, which yeah. is now the, the game. Yeah. So, we got Ken Dorsey coming on. Ken Dorsey's our guy now. Dabble's gone. Ken Dorsey's it. Ken Dorsey's it? Yeah, Ken Dorsey. So, Ken Dorsey was the Miami quarterback in yeah. 2002 on that Ohio State mm-hmm. Miami championship game. So, he was a quarterback then. And he sat behind Dable, who was an Alabama offensive coordinator who moved to Buffalo. And he has done very well with Josh Allen. But I'm really excited for Ken Dorsey because Ken Dorsey apparently is like as soon as Ken came on, like Josh had that big jump to or a year or two yeah. ago. That's, That's all it, it takes is one assistant or one. I mean, you look at like Joe Brady and uh, Joe Burrow at LSU. Like he comes on and is the offensive coordinator there. Boom. I mean, it's like blows up. It's, it's crazy when two guys get a chemistry like that and somebody who's really smart just comes in. It can make a, a world of a difference. I saw some, and we'll get into South Carolina here in a little bit, but I did see uh, Spencer Rattler talking about how he's learned more in this pro style offense and all this stuff than he learned uh, under Lincoln Riley. So some, some interesting stuff there, but I don't want to stray too far from the bills. We'll wrap things up here shortly. Uh, got any closing Closing kind of current state uh, stuff y'all want to talk about real quick before we move into to college. I know we were already getting into it a little bit. Yeah, no. I want, I want uh, Jordan Davis. Bills trade up for Jordan Davis in the draft. Georgia, defensive tackle. Yeah, he's we, massive. We need that, that guy who's going to bulldoze someone. 
or apparently Akeem Hicks. Yeah, apparently Akeem Hicks is for the Bears as a guy. Yeah. Oh, he'd be, he'd be a, a huge signing. Yeah. The draft is coming. What you got, Vincent? Yeah, my thoughts are, you know, um, again, we're in a very comfortable spot compared to what we usually are. We can almost do, like, best player available. Um, but, you know, I think uh, – and Trisha, I know we've always talked about this in college and stuff, but, like, the, the ball goes goes to the O-line first. Yeah. Um, D-line, O-line, within the, the, the play – when the play starts, the O-line and D-line are the first first people to clash. Um, so – and that's and the Bills have struggled a little bit there, so I think we, we need to look, a, look at the O-line, D-line, of course. Um, no one says their O-line's good. I don't think there's a single NFL fan who ever says their O-line is good. Unless yeah. you're like, you know, there's one or two teams over the course of the year that, that'll say it. Um, but, you know, state affairs, uh, I, I think we also need a um, – Wes and I were talk, uh, texting about this the other day. Um, Cordell Patterson is kind of on our radar. Um, yeah, he's a free agent. He'd be a fantastic he's, yeah, yeah he'd be a fantastic <laughs> right. um, Like a gadget player, also a running back, adds some depth to receiver. Um you can kind of get them at like a lower cost because the Falcons kind of towards the end of the season so yeah. kind of wean off of them, which was, you know, my fantasy team did not enjoy that, but. You could get them for get them cheap for sure. Better. Two million. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And, you know, people want to finally come to Buffalo. Um, yeah. I mean, know, it's you, a you've seen Super Bowl that contender. Titans. Yeah. We, we signed yeah. Nico Autry, Bud Dupree, um, Julio Jones was fine with being traded here. And, uh, I mean, this all season will be very interesting too, but it, the, you get the success rolling and it definitely helps with Nashville becoming a bigger city and kind of getting the name more on the map, but you just get everything rolling and the, the rest will follow free agents will show up guys want to win. Yeah. Yeah. And a funny one, um, and, and Bill fans are super jaded on this already. Um, Rob Gronkowski, um, <laughs> who is known to be a very, he, he had a really rough hit on, on Trey White, um, <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I don't want Gronkowski at all. Don't talk about his name. We don't want that. We don't want okay. that. No, <laughs> we, don't, we don't. Yeah, we're the, the play. We're like the I play, said, Bills fans are jaded. Dump on Trey White <laughs> at the end of the play, and the Bills players got flagged. Like, I will never forget that. Watching that happen. Was, what? How is that allowed? And nothing is called. And all of a sudden, this guy's still just. I don't know. Krakowski, I do not want on this football team. I'll take Dawson Knox or Krakowski any day, unfortunately. Yeah, Dawson's a beast. He's a national I, native. It, He's a national native isn't yeah, he? Brentwood Academy. Yep. He went to, He's he right went down to, the road from me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because he went to Ole Miss. That's right. It's not that far. Okay. Yeah, so he went down to Ole Miss, and he wasn't even that, like – amazing of a tight end at Ole Miss either just once he got to the combine you saw the size and everything the Bills I mean very smartly hopped on him what was it third round yeah yeah, third round pick, I think. yeah. he's had his share of uh poor drops poorly timed drops but he's made up for it I like him. Yeah. kind of become the uh, end zone guy for Josh Allen when he's on the field mm -hmm. yeah he's really yeah. replaced Cole Beasley in a lot of senses um mm -hmm. for at least this year um, he was kind of like got a lot of targets. He got like, you know, uh, Dawson Knox would get like eight targets a game. Yeah. And like that. Is, and Beasley didn't get as many. Um, I thought it'd be Emmanuel Sanders like taking those those shots, but um, E Man really just replaced John Brown. Um, yeah. I think even an upgrade from John Brown, really. Yeah. Yeah. And then Gabe Davis, of course. Last year. But, yeah. Last year. I love John Brown, though. I don't know where yeah, he is. No. Okay. I love John Brown, but it, you're right. Sanders definitely like he made his name known. But he was in Buffalo. <laughs> Quick to get on the scene. Sweet. Well, why don't we go ahead and move on uh, to college? We'll talk a little bit of football and a little bit of basketball because uh, the Vols obviously got some big stuff going. And South Carolina had something rolling there, but kind of slowing down a little bit. <laughs> But uh, why don't we kind of do the same intro that we did uh, for the Bills, kind of talk about why uh, you're a fan of the college that you went to, maybe a little uh, kind of history behind it too. So, Vinny, you want to kick us off this time? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I actually wasn't a uh, Vol fan until I arrived – well, until I decided to go to school there. Um, I actually grew up a Clemson fan. Growing up, Wes was going around uh, visiting schools when I was like nine years old. Last on to Clemson, yeah. Which oddly enough, our other brother ended up going to Clemson. Um, in fact, I was even in Clemson during the Georgia 
um, Tennessee uh, Dobbs nail boot uh, Hail Mary to Juwan. Oh Jenny. yeah, um, yeah. I was I was with um. Oddly enough, I, some of your uh, your listeners might know George Whitfield was like sitting right next to me on the couch. It's really weird. Um, the quarterback guru, yeah, um, from College Game Day. But I don't know if you know who that is. But uh, so I was watching that happen at like some fraternity house um, in Clemson. We were there for the Louisville Clemson game, which of course was that was Lamar. Wild that was when game. Lamar was right, or was it after he left? I think it was. No, it was Lamar Jackson. Yeah, it was that's what I was saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. There was like two wild games that I could have chosen to go go to, um, but nonetheless, I, I went to. You know, I think watching. I remember the first game I watched after I decided to uh, to go to UT, um, and it was the Iowa Bowl game with Josh Dobbs, and I think we just we just beat the hell out of them, um, if I'm remembering it right, um, and I think going into our freshman season. Or a freshman, our freshman year, crucial. Um, saying this as if I played, uh, <laughs> we we're, we were really comfortable with um, with like where we're at with Butch Jones. Yeah, um, maybe not comfortable because there's still like teams. It was still so, we like, that A and M game was stupid and like yeah. Uh, obviously, I mean, losing to Vanderbilt, potential. South Carolina at the end of the season, like <sighs> that was not fun. When we had beaten Florida and Georgia, literally the East was in our hands. And we just fumbled it so badly. Yeah, it was an odd year. It was really a, like eventful year. I mean, as a, like it was objectively looking back on it, it was so fun. Um, even at the lows, like the highs were so high that it was kind of worth it. You know, the yeah, like the hail mary, the like the Bristol Bowl, like there was the so much Florida going on comeback. That yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that was a crazy year. I forgot that was right. Like, and I think that yeah, that was our freshman year, and I think that trajectory like put me on a trajectory where I was like such a fan so early on. Um, and then of course it all comes crashing down um, very soon afterwards. You know, we had some, some tough years. Guarantano, um, I'll say he didn't live up to our like expectations. Um, really it was tough to watch. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like I, I think having that first year of us being like, like um, having such a fun first year, I think helps me become a fan very quickly. Um, of course, going to school there and being with everyone. Um, and we're in a good spot now. I mean, if we're talking nowadays, but... Um, yeah. I, th- I like where I was. How many years yeah. did Guant- um, Guant- Guantanamo play? <laughs> how many years? I want to know. From Tennessee fans, how many years did he actually play? What was it? Uh, I mean, he- Dormady technically started over him, but... Um, yeah. A lot of people started over him, as they yeah. should have. <laughs> but he kept playing. And so it was uh, 18, 19, 20. I think it was four years. Good, solid four years. Three like, years. It may have been three years. Four, I think it was years. three because we had Dobbs, yeah. then Dormady, then Garantano, and then now we had Hooker. Hooker was yeah. good. Hooker was good. Yeah. Um, good. Well, was and, really and we saw flashes in those Pruitt teams. Like Oh, yeah, especially defensively. Um, yeah, it was weird because yeah. I I thought I thought Pruitt would be like that like um, I don't know how really how to describe it but basically like a comfortable build you know like slowly progressing towards getting better you know I always thought he'd be like a stable program you know um, I thought at worst he'd be like a Mark Richt um, yeah it's like nine and three seasons every year but yeah. man those lows are low now looking back I mean McDonald's bags and not that in Kentucky coaches don't do that but back to back pick sixes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh gosh. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what I, I don't but you know, Hypel came in. Um I think I think as Vol fans we should be wary no matter what. Um just because we, we just know better at this point. Yeah. Um don't but we are in a comfortable spot as now. Yeah, exactly. Um but you know, it's been a long time since we had just a a, a, just a good quarterback, like a, a great quarterback, maybe, but good quarterback. Well, y'all were supposed to have uh, Mr. Lawrence, weren't you? Yeah, he grew up a Tennessee <laughs> fan. Grew up, I mean, you could those there Bush Jones years. You could uh, look at so many players that should have come to Tennessee, but that didn't because of his just overall complete 
idiocy, like being an idiot. I mean, that's the only thing you, know, you could call Butch Jones at this Good point. Good on them. Good yeah, on them. They, they made the right choice. Yeah. So they, yeah. they obviously, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is too mad about the decisions he made yeah. winning the national championship and getting drafted first overall. So T Law, you might have called. Hey, that I, one. he probably wishes he could choose he could go to, who he could go to now, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I bet you he doesn't want to be on the Jags. I bet he's glad that Urban Meyer is going. Yeah. Yeah. Is I mean, Ur- Vincent, before we get into South Carolina, I do want to talk a little Vols basketball kind of current state with you. Uh, big win against Georgia. The Vols are rolling right here. Number three defensively ranked uh, by Ken Palm, uh, who keeps uh, a lot of advanced metrics. The Vols are hot right now, seem to be clicking. Kenny Chandler's making shots. Josiah Jordan James is scoring finally at a really good rate. Uh, and Brandon Huntley Hatfield, I think, has been the the biggest surprise recently to come in. Just she, monster on the boards, and also very uh, makes some big plays defensively. So excited about that, Vincent. Uh, what are your thoughts on Vols basketball right now? Yeah, um, I think we're in a you know a, as good as a spot as we can be. You know, um, I don't think like I think us being a one seed or us being a top four team is kind of irrelevant. In a way, Um, I think we're just in such a good spot, like mentally. I know we had a a tough game against Georgia, but, um, you know, going into this weekend, like we're going to we're going to we're going to build back so much. I think with Arkansas win or lose, um, there's going to be so much energy going around buzz around the team that I think, um, you know, we can carry that into the tournament. Um, How I really feel about it is that, you know, the. The way I compare our team, the way I've been looking at it. Um, and of course this is, it, this, we may not win at all. Right. But, um, we likely won't, but the, the team I like to compare us to is, is it kind of reminds me of, um, like an old Duke team, um, in a way, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what year it was, but it was the year they won, won with, with, um, Greg Paulus and John Shire and, um, and Zubek. So yeah, I think, that's some good I think what, yeah, they had they had some great players, but I, I think like the key to that team and the I think the key to our team in a way is that we have you know lots of skilled guards, and then yeah. we have big bodies down low that can just that can just eat space. Um, and you, a lot of teams can't can't win both. Like we've won both ways, and then we have the long defender on the outside with Josiah James. Um, you know, we we can win a lot of ways, um, and you really 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 need that in March um, to be able to 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 beat these teams because all these teams are built differently right and you got to be built to win in a lot of different ways um to compete with that uh but i think i think we i wouldn't worry i'm not worrying too much about our seed necessarily um yeah probably but you know i think it ultimately comes down to to like coaching and like and and in-game coaching um and, and not no knock on Barnes, he gets us he gets us to where we need to be, but um, it is going to come down to to some in game coaching um, down the stretch. Well, we have the players, and you know, there's some execution stuff, of course. But um, is, is Barnes the Mike Richt of college basketball, or Mark Richt? Excuse me. Is yeah, he exactly I mean, that? he kind of. <laughs> it feels like he almost is. He gets you in top contention for the SEC every year. You win a lot of games. There's one year where you you get to number one, like one out of every eight, and then uh, it, it all crumbles down by the time you get to the Sweet Sixteen. So, is is that a, is hey, that a basketball? I'm good with that. Yeah, I was going to ask. Is that a painful thing as a Tennessee fan? Are you guys okay with with the usual? I mean, sweet- I I obviously want national championships out of baseball, football, and basketball every year. Those but- yeah, I'm I'm excited about the baseball team a lot. Tony V's got some some stuff rolling, but I mean, I, I think at this point Tennessee has put itself kind of back on the map of the Bruce Pearl era being a, a top basketball team every year. So I think my mindset has almost kind of reverted back to then, um, and it, it, just really expecting the the most out of the falls. So it's, it's we'll nice have to. Have- I think Rick will retire here in the next couple of years, and that'll depend. I think if I'd love to hire Kim English, our, our former assistant, um, he's doing a great job down at uh, George Mason. Got some big wins oh, down cool. there. So, okay. yeah, yeah, That's pretty local. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, 
That's a good team to be a part of. Like it's a good mid conference. Yeah, he's and he, he's winning, winning, and uh, good recruiting class is doing well. So I, I think he'd be a good guy to fill in for uh, Rick Barnes. We'll uh, we'll have to see them. I love the eight. Yeah, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with us. You know, if we're getting to the tournament every year, um, that's that's fine with me. You know, if, <laughs> you even if we miss every me? couple years, <laughs> you've hung out with me too much. You're comfortable getting the tournament every year. Yeah. We, I would love well, to be you know. happy. I get it. It's good. It must be nice. It's uh, My perspective on the Bulls is they probably should win. They, uh, they should have – they should make a Final Four run. And if you're in the Final Four, you have a shot at the national title, right? Like, if you're in there, you've got a shot. They should be able to make a Final Four run with how much talent they've had, how much talent they currently have, and how much talent they're going to have. They should make a run. Yeah, I mean, the recruiting classes have stayed top 10 every year pretty much under Rick Barnes. We continuously reload with five stars and four stars. So the talent's there. It's really just execution, game plan, um, and getting the right pieces in at the right time. Yeah. But, uh, Wes, why don't you go ahead and kick off a little South Carolina talk here. We'll, we'll run through football uh, super quick, just kind of – Update on what you're thinking right now with uh, Beamer Ball, as I love to call it, Shane Beamer. Um, got a lot of lot of expectations because he was kind of the – him and Josh Heupel were the two guys that are – all right, they're kind of making a name for themselves in the SEC. They might actually be good coaches, got some good wins. So uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Gamecock football right now? Yeah, it's uh, – feels like it's been a long time. It really hasn't been that long in the Gamecock history of things that were – we're making noise, so to speak. Hiring Square is a big jump. Um, Beamer wasn't as noise noisy in his hire, but going seven and six when you're supposed to go three and what eight, ten, uh, nine, whatever it is, we're in a good spot. And getting Rattlers, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun just to just to see what happens. It's he's he's in a good spot for him, and it's a great spot for the school. It's it's really cool what how it transpired. Um, I'm excited about it. It's 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 fun to be building a team that's not Vanderbilt. No offense to them, all the offense to them. Building a team that's not like just dead in the water. Um, Kentucky's yeah, oh, yeah. good. Tennessee's good. We're good. Florida's always good, and Georgia is an impenetrable wall. So the East is just it's just really freaking hard in the SEC. It just it's just tough. It doesn't matter who you play; it's going to be a freaking battle every single week. So. There's hope. Eight wins would be really, really, really cool. I would enjoy eight wins so much. Seven wins would be a little frustrating. Um, and anything below that would, would suck. And that's it's good to have those expectations, but um, it feels like it's been a while. Yeah. I feel I, I think Tennessee's kind of on the same boat. I, I'd really hope for an eight or nine win season, like eight regular season, one bowl win would be awesome for Tennessee. I think that's like the the ultimate perfect season goal that we should go for. We get a win over Florida, maybe since they just fired Dan Mullen or kind of figuring things out. Um, but I think South Carolina definitely has the potential to make noise. And Clemson had a down year a little bit last year. Uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of plays out there, but um, I think South Carolina has a shot at kind of making some noise uh, definitely at the end of the season too. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. It's you're right about the Tennessee thing. It's like we've we've had some really good matchups the last couple of years that have like determined if we're over 500 or not for good team. But we're good teams. That's the thing is we're not like bad bad teams. Um, but they're they're both right. Hey, Kentucky's good too. And I mean, yeah. like I said, we're always had always. Yeah, it's like a battle. It's like a battle for second, almost. Just whoever's behind Georgia, whoever wants to be behind Georgia. That's really yeah, the, yeah. The battle. It's like I, I hope one of us just one of us just wins a game against them. Someone's going to. It's going to happen. You got to catch them on their heels. But they're the problem is they're so freaking deep and so freaking talented that like even you catch them on their heels on a bad game, it's still going to be to the wire. Like great football, and they have a very good shot at it. Even if you catch them on a very very bad day, which sucks. Yeah. It's probably I think if this year, this year could be a potential shot at them, though, because 
you know the coaching staff and players are going to be a little fat and happy with the national championship win. Like it's tough to <laughs> just. It, it, I mean, how many teams can just rip off two national championships in a row? It's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. So I think Georgia. They got their big one out of the way. They, they've they done everything that you could have done. They've got the national championship back to Georgia since 1980. Um, it's, uh, they, they seem pretty pretty happy and content with how things have played out right now. So I don't know. That that drive and hunger can push you, push you to do amazing things. And if you lose that from winning it all, they always talk about kind of the, the hangover, the Super Bowl hangover. There's definitely a national championship hangover too. So I'll be uh, interested to see how the East plays out. I mean, yeah, look at LSU. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, really, yeah. they're, they're perfect for it. But we don't have too much time here left, but I definitely want to talk some baseball before we close things out. Uh, Vincent, I know you're a Dodgers fan, and then Wes, you're more of a Braves fan. But before we get into either one of those, we got to talk about the elephant in the room, uh, the lockout going on right now, Manfred. The commissioner, uh, given terrible deals, apparently, given, given CBA deals that are just literally meant to be rejected, uh, I saw was uh, one kind of headline, something like that. Um, so they've already canceled the first two series of the year. What are our thoughts on where the, where the season ends up? How is this going to play out? You want, you want me to get it? All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, you're here. Uh, what? You're eager to talk about it, so. I'm eager to talk about it. I'm eager, yeah, I'm very, I, this feels like a very cyclical thing doing the lockout, and they're going to get to an agreement, and as a fan, unfortunately, I do have the privilege of saying I just want to see baseball. Yeah. I don't really care how they get it done. I hope they get it done sooner than later, um, but we were talking about the COVID season where it was like 60 games in 65 days. It was a blast. It was awesome. It was just baseball every night constantly. Um I hope they get it done soon. Though. It's, I honestly, I don't even know what it's about. I'm sure they're arguing over money of some sort, but I just want to play baseball. I, I talked earlier before we hopped on was the over under in games that they'll play this season was 145. I think I should drop that to 129. When's the All Star? What is it right at, at, at half or is it? Yeah, it's around the halfway point. I, I don't half, remember so exactly. Like 120? What am I doing? I'm bad math. No, 90. <laughs> bad math. Um, 129. Yeah, I'll do 129. A couple games before the All-Star break. A couple series before the All-Star break. They'll get together. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, so I mean, obviously winning the World Series. <laughs> well, we can get to that. but I, Yeah. Uh, uh, we're still throwing in that. Go ahead and block out cool, whatever. <laughs> Good. We're in a good spot. Can't complain too much. Yeah, I was reading. So I saw Mike Trout kind of came out and made a big statement about Manfred and had his thoughts on it. And uh, Scherzer and some of the other uh, future Hall of Famers were coming out. There was an interview that I was reading about that essentially this whole lockout is not about them. Uh, they said the the players union is really focused on getting guys who are, are free agents and the minor leagues and really young more money. Just because at least that's what they were saying. Because I mean, they already make. I mean, these dudes, the max max deals are making a ton of money. They don't really care about making more. I, I find it hard to believe they do. But they said, yeah. You, I mean, you look at yourself now. You're 35 years old. You've got a World Series. You're going to be a Hall of Famer. Whatever. You look back when you were 22 and uh, trying to make it to a team. So they kind of talk about thinking about those days and thinking about the players um, and that the the teams need to spread money around more to the players that are out there on the field, giving it all. So I'm, 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 I think I side with the players a little bit more here. And just from what I've read and heard Manfred is in his negotiating has been terrible. Just deals that, I mean, would make no sense to accept. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but uh, not excited baseball games are being canceled in the first place. Yeah. And to, to, kind of rip off of that. that. That was going to be one of my main points is that, um, you know, playing baseball and, um, you know, growing up and playing baseball through high school, you play with so many – or you train and you play with so many, like, former minor leaguers and um, even major leaguers. Their stories are just always about how grueling, the, uh, like, minors and 
even the majors can be, you know, throughout the season, it's a grueling schedule. Um, and they're making these guys who are they're negotiating with basically just, you know, tons of money. Um, so I'm always going to side with the players on, on these kinds of things. Um, especially with baseball, they, they go through a lot. Um, you know, they're still getting paid a ton, but especially minor leaguers, they don't get paid much at all. You know, we have a minor league team here in Richmond, the flying squirrels. Oh, yeah. Um, and I know their players get paid nothing. Um, and they, they barely have enough to, to stay, you know, I'm sure there's been talent that probably could have made the major leagues, but, but just couldn't, that they couldn't handle the lifestyle of being a minor leaguer. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a snug industry once you get below the majors. There, it's tight. I didn't know if, I didn't know it was about that, but that's not surprising either. That the the senior players. Oh, one lot. more thing. Sorry, I only have one more thing to say about about the, about it. Firstly, if the if the the lockout goes past the All Star game or gets the All Star game canceled, then I'll be upset. It's going to be in, it was supposed to be in L A. That's my only thing about it. I hope it doesn't get canceled. Oh, the Dodgers. Dodgers. I, I, I didn't know about that. I have a buddy who played in the minors for a while. He got called up once or twice, but um, but he stuck it out. He, he knows the ride on those buses. Like, it's, he told me it's just – it's rough. It sucks. Um, yeah. We'll, Looking we'll out for the young guys. I've heard, Manfred, I've heard Manfred's – not not the best person to work with. I've heard bad things. Yeah, and I mean, ever since Bud Selig uh, kind of gave up being the commissioner, it, baseball has gone downhill for sure since 2015 to now. Um, yeah. I mean, which, it's seven, which, seven short years. It, baseball was already kind of on the decline a little bit, but, I mean, it's gotten a lot worse, I feel like, recently. Um, and they need to try something, do something to get people watching again. It's it's weird. I disagreed with the whole was it uh, tenth inning guy on second start, mm-hmm. but after watch, I don't think it should be in the playoffs. I think in regular season. Regular yeah. season, yeah, I kind of yeah, like that it. Makes too. Sense. It makes sense. I liked it because it's like you know, there's going to be a score within an inning or two. It's going to happen. Yeah, there's a couple a couple overtime rules that need to change. You know, but, there, oh, yeah, a-, <laughs> a few different a few different leagues <laughs> overtime rules. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple. That's not the reason it happened, but there is a couple that need to be looked at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I'm still not really 13 seconds. It's going to be a while. <laughs> Just, uh, anyways, sorry. It was our, it was our indoctrination into the, the true really of, of, of agony playoff disappointment people. fandom. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. It sucked a lot. Um, guys, why don't we – we got about 10 minutes here or so. We'll do five minutes each. Vinny. Talk about the uh, Dodgers and then Wes close us out with the Bravos because uh, we got to save the best for last World Series champs. Yeah, so Dodgers, um, you know, it's probably been my only fandom where I've been in just, just maybe not bliss heaven almost. necessarily, but it's yeah. been great. It's been great forever. Um, but we still didn't have that championship until that COVID year, um, which counts. That championship counts. Um, and I'm sorry, Wes, we had to beat the Braves to get there. Um, we also yeah, have, you know, was a crazy um, series. yeah, but it's been a pleasure to watch all, you know, the, like we've had such great players come through the years. You know, I think I started off really as a Dodgers fan with like the Russell, uh, Russell Martin, Matt Kemp, Andre Ethier, yeah. um, Chad Billingsley years. Um, then I had some uh, uh, Manny Ramirez years, which were really fun. Um, people forget about that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as of late, you know, Clayton Kershaw's always been the guy, and we, I'm glad he got his championship. Um, that was such an awesome season. You know, this year, you know, I'm, I'm not too upset. You know, it's that, it's that Super Bowl hangover, World Series hangover. Um, losing to the Braves was not the, the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, we'd like to get the ship. Um, but the Astros lost, you know. I think that's all. That's all I can say about about last season's playoffs. The Astros did not win the World Series. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I, everyone, I can go. That can go to us on that note. Yeah, I think everyone can agree on that. You you were commenting on it's not the worst thing to lose to the Dodgers. Really. Yes, or lose to the Braves. Excuse me. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed that victory. Oh so yeah. Because we were. I thought we were going. We were up three. Was it three? Nothing, three no. one. 
Yeah, three it was one. three one the year before, and then yeah, the before. gave up three straight. Yeah, it was it was pretty freaking agonizing watching that. So um, having y'all having uh, the Braves beat the Dodgers was really enjoyable. Um, <laughs> the Braves are probably going to be fat and happy. Atlanta's all going to be fat and happy. Georgia won. Braves won. They're going to be a nice little hangover. But the Braves are good. The Braves are – they're a good baseball team. It was a blast watching them this year. It was an absolute joy watching that team. What they did right at the All-Star break to pull that team together was unbelievable to watch. Um, and we were just talking about earlier, the, the wild card in Peterson, the Pearl Man, you have to have that wild card player. And then Solaire stepping in and hitting that absolute meatball bomb in game six of the World Series, just shuddering them. It was awesome. And then you had Freddie Freeman, who's just the base, and the pitching staff just just battled through it. Freed and Ferguson, Smith, uh, what was it, Mats- Matzik? Um, who's the, who's oh, the yeah. other uh, Who's the other uh, were, Sorry, excuse me, bad language. I don't know if that's <laughs> The uh, the other middle league, I can't remember her name. Um, it's been fun to watch. They're good, and they get uh, was it Soroka back? So Soroka sat basically two years, and he's one of the best pitchers in the MLB. And he sat on the bench. He's been hurt both years. Um, he played what the first half of this past year, but he's the, the Braves are good. They're just a good baseball team. They went toe to toe with the Dodgers the year before, and they beat them this year. And they ended up going at all. They're a good baseball team. I'm excited about them. I really yeah. am. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It's a cool team. Yeah, being How'd around Nashville. About Freddie Freeman. Oh, huh? How would you feel, Wes, if uh, – I haven't talked to you about this, but no. how would you feel if uh, no, Freddie Freeman talk- joined the Dodgers no. real quick? We're not talking about Freddie. We don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it. I know it's out right, there, fine. and if it happens, it's going to suck. I don't think it will happen. I don't hope it will happen, but it is out there. You're right. I know. Yeah, I get- rumors are coming we out. It. We did gone. it to the – we did it to the Red Sox. We got we stole did. Mookie after he won the ship. How are the Yankees in the West? That's what you are. You just siphon players. We have a farm. We're the Yankees with the farm system. We yeah. got a great farm system. I know it's phenomenal. people. People forget about that. <laughs> Mostly homegrown. It's just we add those like Mookie bets. Throw them in there. Sure. You know. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't hurt to have Mookie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. It never hurts to have Mookie. Yeah. No, he's a Nashville guy too. Is he really? That's right. Yeah, where he went to, uh, uh, I want to say Centennial or something like that, but he was uh, supposed to go to Tennessee, but ended up going straight to the minors. Okay. Uh, it took his uh, contract, got paid, ended up not going to Tennessee. So what could have been? Come back. He still got his eligibility. No, he can come back. <laughs> that would be, if he's like <laughs> 33, 34, 35, he's like, well, I'd probably retire in a couple of years anyway. <laughs> Like maybe I should just go back and win win a natty with Tony V and the boys. Yeah, yeah, let's bring it back. Come on, that'd be insane. That would be insane. Uh, well, guys, I think that's about all the time we have. I appreciate uh, Wes and Vincent Steinberg both coming on here. Uh, might have to do another one of these as hopefully the baseball season gets going. We can talk a little baseball and we can talk a little NBA too. Uh, we didn't get a chance today, but we'll uh, we'll get to that next time. Um, guys, check us out uh, at Paydirt Sports, one word on Instagram, at Paydirt underscore sports on Twitter. Then you can go check out the blog at paydirtsports.blog, all kinds of articles and cool stuff on there. The podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, thank you guys again for hopping on. Any closing notes before I shut us down? No, nah, man. Thanks for having us on. This was awesome. This was yeah, class. this was great. Hater, this was great. Hater, it's a good name. I love that. As soon as, he, as, soon as Vincent says, like, that's a good name. Oh, yeah. Good- no, we got it rolling. <laughs> Pay Dirters, we appreciate it as always. We'll catch you next time. Pay Dirt out.